According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than six and a half million Americans have now received their first dose of the vaccine against the coronavirus. It's a number that will be growing every day, though it's well behind what public health experts had been hoping to see. Along with manufacturing and distribution issues, public health officials are concerned about millions of Americans who are resistant to taking the vaccine. To address that, some of those officials are shining a light not just on the science behind the shots, but on the scientists who help bring the vaccines to fruition. When the president paid a visit to the National Institutes of Health last March, the leads at the Vaccine Research Center explained their life-saving mission. Why shake proteins that will bind? The key to it, a 34-year-old doctor named Kizmikia Corbett. I was just there telling the task force about the work that we've been doing. Two weeks later, Dr. Corbett's team began the first stage of clinical trials. We have taken a lot of the knowledge that we have gained over the last six years and applied it to a fairly revolutionary vaccine platform in collaboration with Moderna. That vaccine rolled out within 10 months. The vaccine teaches the body how to fend off a virus because it teaches the body how to look for the virus. By basically just showing the body the spike protein of the virus, the body then says, oh, we've seen this protein before. Let's go fight against it. That's how it works. For a lot of people, seeing you as the person who is part of this process, there's, there's a trust factor. To be honest, I didn't realize the level of impact that my visibility might have. I do my work because I love my work. Dr. Corbett's interest in science began at an early age, but one opportunity made a key difference. She attended the University of Maryland, Baltimore County as a Meyerhoff Scholar, an aggressive program that mentors minorities and women in science. Graduates include Surgeon General Jerome Adams. Was she someone who's going to make it all along? She was definitely going to make it in life. Dr. Freeman Rabowski has been president there for nearly 30 years. She had strong science background, but she also was very comfortable with people. We need more scientists who can connect to people. She could do that when she was 17 easily. What we do at UMBC is to support students of color, black, but also students in general to make sure they make it in science. Only 18% of all students graduate with a STEM degree, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. Around 2% are black. It's important for those people to see people looking like them, like themselves, who can be involved. If it's about women or if it's about blacks, because it shows that you've got people who understand what you've gone through. Dr. Corbett and I have worked together for maybe 15 or 16 years since she was in high school. Dr. Barney Graham's not only Corbett's mentor, he's her boss. When you recognize somebody has special qualities, you need to do things that can keep uh, those other things out of the way and, and avoid some of the dismissiveness that often happens, not only to minority uh, people, but to women. And historically, that bias strikes not just professionals in the field, but those that they serve. Well, let's talk about the impediments to the trust. I grew up in Birmingham all of my life. I was hearing about the Tuskegee study. The federally sanctioned Tuskegee experiment sought to examine the long-term effects of syphilis by letting infected black men go untreated with no regard to the suffering it caused. How do you feel about being used as a guinea pig? Well, <laughs> I thought once he was pretty rough. Another example, the special cells of Baltimore cancer patient Henrietta Lacks were taken without her explicit permission and were subsequently used in billions of dollars worth of medical research without compensation. There are many other examples of supposedly objective scientists who were caring about everyone who valued people of color less. It's a painful truth. And this is what's significant. When I say Kismikia Corbett is from a small town in North Carolina, a young woman of faith who understands the socio-cultural issues that we face, who knows what racism means, she gets all of that. What's your message to people who are hesitant to take this vaccine? Well, number one is that I get it. 
number two is that to really take advantage of the level of transparency that we are attempting, even I haven't even seen before, such as FDA hearings and briefings being broadcast online and data coming out almost instantly. And to try and address them. And in one of those webinars, fully, Dr. Anthony Fauci gave her a ton of credit. The vaccine that you're going to be taking was developed by an African-American woman. And that is just a fact. I mean, that is a fact. A fact offering illumination to those often left in the dark. She cannot be a hidden figure. She cannot be a hidden figure. She needs to be in textbooks. Little girls need to see her of all races. This is what's possible. She's not a hidden figure now. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, she's not. And it's just, it, it is a testament to the work of Dr. Rabowski and others like Dr. Graham, her boss, right. who pushed and also moved out barriers in her way. So she could have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And look at all of us benefiting now from it. I was going to say, the only way you can undo all those years of damage is to start right now and start moving those to the side, put her in the forefront and try to change minds. Yeah, and there are others out there yeah. just like her, of all races. Great story. We want to give them all a big round of applause. Okay, good stuff, Michelle.